Okay, we will continue um, with the lecture of Mia Yoshida, and after uh, her lecture, there will be uh, a break. Then we will be uh, in between um, uh, lectures again. And so, uh, yeah, this a, a slot. I understand it's called a slot. Um, I would like to introduce uh, Mia Yoshida to, to you. Um, I'm very uh, happy that she could come over from Berlin. Uh, she is an independent uh, curator and uh, researcher. Um, and she is from Japan, but currently living and working in, um, in Berlin. And uh, her interests lie in the topics on the notion of subjectivities and new forms of labor. Um, and um, yeah, she has been developing curatorial projects around uh, uh, certain topics. For example, mobile tel telephony and um, the notion of the amateur, amateurism. Um, and the title of her lecture is Labors of Love Revisited, and that's also the title of an exhibition about the changing notion of the amateur in digital uh, culture um, in relation to concepts of labor. And um, well, I'm, I'm really um, I'm very uh, curious to hear her talk because we share this subject. I'm also re researching this subject. And um, in my opinion, the, um, yeah, the uh, the amateur and the professional are also going through um, a kind of makeovers, uh, the amateur uh, um, into the professional or a professional, a new kind of professional and uh, vice versa. So, um, yeah, I'm really uh, excited uh, that she, uh, she's here. Um, Mia. First of all, um, my name is Mia Yoshida from Berlin, and I would like to thank to Gabriel and especially Jorinda uh, to invite me today for this occasion. Uh, actually, I'm also very pleased to be here um, uh, because uh, the participation on this topic of extreme making over really provided me an opportunity. Oops provided me an opportunity to think over the notion of amateur, which I have been working on current years. Actually, my contribution or standing point is to question a clear distinction or a presupposition between amateur and professional in the contemporary reality, which is kind of opposed to the presetting of extreme making over which enforces and emphasizing this distinction. However, considering the notion of amateur as a site or site of subjectification, I hope my standing point of view adds another perspective on the notion of making over. In 1941, in the intimate banalities, one of his essay, Askayon, a Danish artist, predicted that the future of art would be kitsch, and he praised amateur landscape painting as the best art today. Nearly 70 years later now, his prophetic and polemic statement still offers us an important key in the consideration of a seminal aspect of a contemporary art and everyday life. The notion of amateur, which Jung picked up, marks a distinctive shift in the field of a modern contemporary or modern cultural production, after which formal boundaries between professional and amateur were no longer easily pinned down. I need to wear my glasses. <laughs> Repeating my age, repeating my age. <laughs> Amateurs are no longer those cultural figures whose brain and pure and selfless love for particular object or art and set them aside from other social groups. It does not also set them in opposition to professional who were only it for the sake of money. In the course of a 20th century, Amateurs have become representative 
of the cultural ideals, standing in for everything that one was ready to accept as independent-minded, not corrupt, or ethically sound, or offbeat, or cool innovative. Certainly, under the influence of the different cultural and technological revolutions in the different parts of the world, the ethos of amateur has been socially and economically co-opted thousand times. In the last decade, it has been continuously reconstructed by an all-encompassing all global industries of images, objects, and services as the very epitome of a creative thinking or solution-oriented management or innovation. In this, in this emphatic sense, we can now speak of professional amateurs while amateurish professional still retains a negative, negative by taste. But such ambiguities around the amateur have been further emphasized by the development of a delocalized technology together with a wide distribution of electronic commodities, logistics, and network connectivities, and are now found out not only in cultural scenes, but, but at closer view in every single aspect of our daily life. Technology have produced new media or a new mediated space where a different intervention happens. Today, a huge mass of users has gained access to means of mediated productions. Such different interventions consequently produce different constellations of realities and the deflection of an amateurish approach to life. How do we understand such a new realities, and how can we deflect them? Are they really producing a new form of life? Today, my presentation sets the notion of amateur as a starting point for examining contemporary realities in art and culture by taking a close look at concrete practices. It is important that historically, Amateurism is nothing new. However, amateurs as a phenomenon today are much more empowered than ever before. This is something new and something that deeply influences all parts of society. And yet, there are no comprehensive theories or discipline that would clarify the intricate relationship of a productive labor under the condition of a forced amateurism, that state of things where the rhetoric, rhetorical and the immaterial value of work has transcended the material value. Accordingly, my talk attempts to understand the significance of this phenomena with a mixture of historical and contemporary and documentary and artistic examples. I hope my talk will provide the audience with a powerfully coincide and perspective shifting impression that will make you to reconsider traditional notions of art, work, and productivity. Using the notion of the amateur obviously raises a question, who is amateur and who is not? The opposed notion, amateur and professional, are like two sides of coin, which means they are not only opposing, but also reaffirming shared spaces created in historical modernism. In the 19th century West, for example, the French incoherence art movement prompted the idea for the artist, do what you are not professional, and emphasizing childish techniques of drawing and testing a kind of pseudo-amateurism. This pseudo-concept has been historically 
very successful under various forms of radicalism in art. For example, like Dadaism or avant-garde movement in Europe or countercultures in the 60s and 70s or punk movement. Or in the politics of English political campaigns in the 19th and 20th century, as well as even today in the endless recombination of increasingly globalized popular culture, like design strategy, graffiti, remixing music, etc., in all parts of the world. Amateurism as a significant paradigm has accompanied, if not partly caused by art becoming a mass phenomenon. In a sense, today, we are still confronted with the necessity to negotiate and renegotiate our notions of how we use the term art. While amateurism has been promoted by many modernist professionals in the West, very different attitudes towards amateurism can be observed in the other part of the world, for example, in Asia. The extremely intensive use of a mobile communication device in Japan, in Korea, or in China, for instance, seems to be a proof of an almost over-enthusiastic acceptance of new technologies. Another example is that the so-called citizen curators, which has recently been invented in Japan and widely used for those who represented themselves as a curators, after a two-month night course of curating. Moreover, the extreme popularity of a blogging that seems to be based on democratic principle of a public sphere makes every blogger as a citizen journalist who can gain influence rapidly through his or her self-publishing. The first example shows the almost blind acceptance of our new technologies, regardless of their possible potential dangers and moral shortcomings. Or the second example points out to ultimate cultural translation of amateurism. This may reflect entirely different attitude or understanding of being amateur. In another context or in another world, or in another way of understanding the specific form of modernity. So having these questions in mind, I curated an exhibition titled, I curated one exhibition titled Labor of Love Revisited, together with a co-curator, Bo Sol Shin, in Korea. So after this, I would like to introduce some of the examples related with the notion of amateur from this specific, exam, uh, from this specific exhibition, which was an um, uh, international exhibition with 15 artists participated. First example is, no one may ever have the, ne no one may ever have the same knowledge again. This is a collection of letters from amateur observer written and sent to Mount Wilson Observatory, which lies sh a short distance northeast of Pasadena, California, in the United States. The idea for this observatory was conceived in the early years of the 20th century by Dr. George Hale, a unique and brilliant visionary astronomer, to build an observa observatory in the location where a general public can be easily accessible. And actually the beginning of the 20th century is an interesting time period because a lot of new physics axiom was in invented, uh, for example, uh, like a famous relativity theory by Einstein. And uh, in extension of that, there was a new facts uh, were discovered in the cosmos and the universe. And at the same time, uh, there was a mass production of a telescope, which you can use at home, uh, created. So industry also coincide with a lot of new um, invention in the academic physics world. So as early as 1911, 
the astronomers working there began to receive letters from people all around the world. People from all walks of life, educated as well as undereducated. Many of the letters were simply expression of appreciation and all for the work that the, these astronomers were accomplishing. However, there was another class of letter, communication to the astronomers by individual who felt that they had some information or understanding that should be given or to be shared with these people. In the collection of the letters, we can really see some of the observation, intuition, and a strong sense of urgency in their need to communicate to these professional scientists at Mount Wilson. In the exhibition, uh, not only the letters, I also presented some of the object and some uh, documentary uh, film on the observatory and uh, related materials. And this is a part of the letter I exhibited. And uh, in the middle of the letter, uh, 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 the one in the middle, uh, this is a letter uh, from Mrs. Alice Wilson. And I would like to read a quote a little bit of her letters here. July 9, 19, 1915. Some weeks ago, I wrote you a letter not yet having heard from you, I was wondering if you received my letter that I wrote you from Homai. Since I have shifted from Homai to Oakland, so I thought I would send you my new address. I want to tell you I'm not after money and I'm not a flout. I believe I have some knowledge which you gentlemen should have. If I die, my knowledge may die with me. Then, no one may ever have the same knowledge again. I am beginning to get this knowledge, and I would write down and tell you what I know. This is a beautiful sentence, isn't it? But what is more beautiful is in the letter, she never said what she discovered. So this is a fantastic letter and a fantastic aspect of the beauty of the pro procrastination of the amateur culture. Next example is uh, this is a man, uh, uh, as you can see, from Asia. And can you tell what is his profession? Minor. Minor, good guess, yeah. Other, other, other guests? He's wearing a kind of you know, dirty um, working suit, uh, brownish, and you uh, can see the mine, as uh, I think a miner is a really good point, uh, wearing a helmet with the lights. And the helmet color used to be, a, must be a red or something, but now it's a dusty tone, almost opposite of extreming making over. It's uh, extremely making down. And uh, actually, uh, uh, he is an amateur cave diver slash artist, uh, Toru Koyamada in Japan. And he has been fascinated of this activity of cave diving. You know, diving usually go into the ocean, but in his case, uh, diving into the, into the earth, in the hole. And what is really interesting is, you know, the space of the cave underground you cannot get the satellite information or Google Earth you know, to know, to understand that space. Human beings have to go there and measure by themselves with the equipment. You cannot get the automatic uh, uh, measured information from any kind of high technology um, equipment. So he has been doing this cave diving and making a fantastic drawing according to his observation. Because, you know, he's a Japanese artist trained in the Japanese Art Academy, which means a fantastic drawing, realistic drawing technique he has. And his drawings and some of the observations started to be really appreciated 
in the archaeological conference in the universities. So he was constantly being invited to present his observation and the result. And now, after 10 years, he is a, a proper member of the Academic Archaeological Association in Japan. So this is very interesting how um, amateur cave diving as artist is shifting to a, a field of academics. And this is one of the drawings that some of the collection he did uh, over the years of his cave, uh, cave diving activities. But what is more fantastic about his activities is over this time period, he organized and uh, established the kind of amateur cave divers group called Compass, cave, Compass Caving Unit. And this Compass Caving Unit group people try to bring a humanity aspect into the science. And what actually they do is go into the cave and try to read, uh, for example, haiku. Haiku is a, a, a specific uh, format of a poetry in Japan. So try to read haiku in the total darkness, in the 20 meters down in the earth. Or try to study the human movement in the darkness and try to design a kind of uh, performance in the darkness. And they have kind of fantastic mottos of the activities. Take nothing but pictures and leave nothing but footprints and kill nothing but time. And I think the activity is a fantastic example of self-exploration and self-experimentation and also self-education. And Koyamada really believes uh, art functions as art within the field of art is nothing special or he would think rather banal. So-called artistic skills or artistic knowledge uh, has to be meaningful outside of the field and has to be proved. Thinking about such kind of a field and uh, uh, discourses or category, Scottish musician and also artist and also poet uh, contributed a fantastic piece in the exhibition called Palacitical Cassette. Palatistical cassette is, as you can see in the picture, it's a four cassette tape and a recorder uh, which made a palatistical installation on the four existing works in the show. Momos has been exploring his interest in the act of a commentary as well as the textual frameworks around artworks. According to his observations, commentary plays a powerful role in providing artworks with an acknowledgement of a professionalism. But what will happen if such a comments are unreliable? What happens if the professional whom you think reliable are actually not? Extending an idea of a framework to a social scale Two German artists, Minze Träumstadt and Arne Hector, made a documentary film called Yamaluka Europa. Yamaluka Europa is about traders coming together from various countries of the former Soviet Union at Warsaw's Central Stadium, one of the most biggest East European bazaar happens. Unfortunately, this stadium and the bazaar do not exist anymore but the film is named after this bazaar, center for a small trade that does not appear in any tax declarations. And people transport their goods to Warsaw in Poland or other cities west of the ex-USSR. And they are, they are carrying very characteristic bags. And in Russia, these traders are known as the Chernoki, and most of them have exchanged their settled existence for a life of a constant movement between their home and the bazaar. And amazingly, many are academics who are too little to survive, 
and the others are unemployed who used to work as a doctor or nurse in the hospital. The Cherokees are pioneering entrepreneurs in the changing of societies. Changing of societies. It is remarkable that it is mainly a woman who prop up their families in this way. And Yoropa Yamaluka, uh, Yamaluka Yoropa depicts two of these women and the authors and how this film came about it. And the film captures a transformation in the professionalism of the woman that is enforced by a change in the social systems. Looking at influence of the globalization inside of the home, the Korean artist Fa Yon Nam presented a work which is investigating a home in a private life. One work she produced for this exhibition titled A Set of Three, which is a digital printout showing a collage of a component of a kitchen department from the IKEA furniture catalog. Fire Nam observed current phenomena around the standardization of the home or space for cooking under the condition of affordism and the transcendence of the notion of a homemade under the influence of the post-fordism post capitalism. Another piece to combine this digital prints out, she made a sculpture which is a title called Homemade. This is the one which is on the back, a uh, metal sculpture, a uh, set of a chopstick and spoon and forks in an exaggerated scale. This sculpture actually refers to the monument to the 15th anniversary of the foundation of the Workers' Party that was built in 1995 in Pyongyang, North Korea. And the monument presented hammer and the stickle and the brushes, and the artist replaced all these uh, symbolic item of the labor into the item of the eating of food in contemporary culture. Another example on the labor in the context of a Korea is a project archive uh, called 85. On January 6, 2011, Jin Sok Kim, a member of a labor union at the Busan office of a Korean Confederation of a Trade Union climbed up to the top of the crane number 85, calling for withdrawal of the Hanjin Heavy Industry and the construction layoff plans. While Kim was up there, she distributed a lot of information from Twitter how the layoff plan is try to try to cut off many people from the industries. And this twittering was really gave a lot of impact in Korea. And then the public formulated the Bus of Hope campaign from all over the Korea to support this one woman up on the crane. People came from all over Korea heading to where she was up in the crane in the shipyard in Busan and support her protest. These people are not professional activists at all. They were the student or salaryman or artists and even children who are, not, uh, uh, who are interested in topics and wanted to support her manifestation and the claim. And they really hope she comes down in a healthy manner and at the same time cancellation of this lay of plan. With dreaming this kind of things in mind, People are co continuously uh, coming to the shipyard to support her and try not to forget what she is doing up there. And she came down after 312 days, actually two days before the opening of the exhibition, to the ground to succeed for the negotiation. 
So uh, 85 Archive is a collection of uh, some of the civic movement, what actually happened right outside of the exhibition space in Korea. The last example from the exhibition is a web platform called Niko Niko Doga, literally means smiley video, which is extremely became popular in Japan. So I think some of the people in the audience may have already known about this website, especially if you are from Japan. This website started in June 2007 and now it's in English version, German version, Chinese, Spanish, in the different languages. But unfortunately, in the other language, it's not as active as the version in Japan. And the Niko Niko Doga, you can use and you can write a comment within the moving images, each other, as well as uploading the clips. So as you can see in the uh, image, there is some um, uh, letters within the video and you can write your comment, you can choose your font and size and the colors and you can write a comment on the spot which you want to say something on the video. And uh, in the relationship with space and time, if you write a wrong comment, a uh, comment will run quite quickly. But if you, uh, if you write a short comment, your comment moves in the um, images very slowly. And this uh, website became one of the best visited websites in Japan in 2011. And this is a little bit old number, but in the January 2009, more than 11 million people registered in this Niko Niko Doga, and I'm also one of them as well. And this Niko Niko Doga has been creating a strong impact, not only in the scene of the internet, but also creating another alternative uh, space for political discussion as well. And not only for that, especially this was the theme from um, uh, president uh, elections campaign in 2009 in Japan, which was the almost first time uh, other party uh, took the power in Japan. Uh, after the 1945, which is amazing. But what is interesting about this uh, uh, Niko Niko Doga is uh, some of the kind of uh, filmmakers or animation producers, they started to, professional people so-called, uh, started to upload what they want to really do and which is not allowed to do in the context of a professional and uploading their works there and of course faking their kind of uh, identity who they are. But the people who is checking of this website is also quite professional nerd. So some of the comment is really saying that, oh, you are faking your identity, you are fake amateur, means you are actually professional and doing uploading these kind of things. Or uh, no matter what, uh, regardless of who is amateur, who, who are not uh, amateur, uh, who is amateur, who are professional, uh, some of the comments saying that, oh, this production is great, this is a production by God. Uh, these kind of new terms and uh, commenting uh, kind of created in this kind of sphere. And this kind of tagging system create a new genre or a new category emerging out of this conversation and the web platform, which is quite interesting, I think. In his study of economy of a contribution, Bernard Stiegler talks about the vital role of intellectual and artistic life of amateur to restore the atomized world of culture with collaborative technology. Stiegler supposes a degree of enthusiasm is a distinguishing mark dividing amateur from professionals and inter interestingly, flips over the hierarchy of a professional and amateur, saying that high enthusiasm stands for amateur, where low enthusiasm characterizing professional, which is quite provocative for pro professional people, I guess. And he expands this further by referring to saying that all the artists are amateurs in this sense. Today, both popular culture and subculture gained high attention 
not only as a new space of a capitalism, but also as a reflective portrait of a society. If we say new amateur is a person who goes into a domain of intersections and boundaries, and they found their own footages within. Amateurism is one of the cutting edge subjects to contemplate our society. Under the condition of a strong capitalistic influence and peculiar mixture of an extreme subdivided world and connectivity, the whole society is permitted and has no meaning anymore of a distinction. This does not allow us to easily to consider the world in a longer vision. Frequently, new practices developed by amateur are often only idealized by flouting their positive aspect. But what is the critical point of these practices? What can we learn from them? The notion of a professional and amateur, is it still buried? when one person has a multiple laws and professionals in mobilized post-Fordism society. On one side, the new logics of a capitalism seemingly encourages people to do things by themselves. However, on the other hand, exemplifying in the program of extreme making over, it often takes away a space an opportunity to do things by ourselves and enforcing a specific set of value, what is cool, what is beautiful. In such a situation, they are always amateur and professional has to be clearly distinguished. And taking an old fashioned, or I would say one limited translation of the notion of amateur are uh, taking in, and presenting a grossy result created by a team of professionals. However, as Momos remarked, how is the reliability of such result? A certain ideology of a professional are created and recreated there under the notion of making over. In such an imaginary beauty of a procrastination or diversities, or a motto such as taking nothing, kill nothing, but your time, are totally excluded. There, professionalists are emphasized in a kind of peculiar manner of efficiency. And it's interesting enough to think a word professionalism exists, but on the other hand, a word amateurization does not exist in English. And it really points out how we think our way of thinking and also direction of thinking is limited in a way. The concept of amateurism is a quite challenging meta topic to think and also to curate. My example that I brought here today comes from the wide range, but it does not allow us to narrow the research down on only one field or one aspect. Instead, it strongly and even painfully requires us a broad understanding of the notion in the social and the cultural phenomenon. The concept of amateur is on the move. Thank you.